Admiral's log. It's been 15 months since my last log entry and much has changed. The collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire has brought about a shift in power in Europe. The Soviet Union and France are now in control of the regions that were once held by this fallen empire. Our joint operations with these allies have been a success, particularly with the French Navy, who have proven to be an impressive force. With our plans for expansion in Europe mostly completed, it is time to turn our attention to a new potential threat. The United States. I have come to the conclusion that war with them is inevitable. We must prepare ourselves for a campaign against them. Our navy has already started the necessary preparations, and we will continue to do so in the coming months. The United States has long been a powerful nation, but we cannot let that deter us. Our navy is strong, and our sailors are among the best in the world. We will face this challenge with courage and determination, just as we have faced every other obstacle that has come our way. The stakes are high, but we must remain focused on our goal, to protect and expand the interests of Japan. Hey guys, still here and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, episode 46 of this ongoing Japanese campaign. It's June 1938. Last I left you, it was March 1937. In those 15 months, the Austro-Hungarian Empire has completely collapsed. Croatia is now the owner of the port of Pula. The entire nation of Austria-Hungary um, just doesn't exist anymore. Its provinces have been absorbed into other empires, its navy has been reduced to ashes, and you can't find any mention of it anymore in the politics screen. Just gone. Does this mean the world is a safer place? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, Britain and the United States are about to have a bit of a fight, and I am also angling to work that way myself. Because I want to have a go at the 706 ships of the United States Navy. These guys have an incredible growth of 14.8% per year, so their economy is absolutely berserk. So is their navy. Mostly comprised of light cruisers and destroyers. A couple of submarines, which seem to be more of a mistake than anything else. A couple of battleships and a couple of battle cruisers and uh, an okay amount of heavy cruisers. I mean, they got 156, I have 13. Um, I have 121 ships. It's a bit skewed because I have 85 submarines. I only have four battleships, four battle cruisers, 13 heavies, eight lights, seven DDs. So, my mission here is to eradicate, or at least substantially reduce, the United States Navy. For that, I'm going to need new ships. I'm going to most likely build a couple of classes of ships specifically geared towards dealing with this smaller stuff. Because dealing with this is pretty much half their fleet. And sure enough, they have battleships. Yes, they have battle cruisers. But based on the sheer number of ships, my chances of actually finding a smaller ship are substantially greater. What resources do I have at the moment? Uh, most modern ship that I have is the heavy cruiser of the Also class, which would be very well suited to do this. 12 9-inch guns can certainly pack a punch. I also have the 1935 refit of the Gujiras. I still need to refit the whole fleet because most of these guys are a bit on the older side. I've crafted a new version of the destroyer. This is the Okinami. The previous version was the Nenohi. These do 37 knots. Four, uh, sorry, eight four and a half inch guns. These guys are now are in command of triple guns. So I got triple five inch long barrel guns capable of firing over longer ranges with high end HE. What I now need is something that can deal with trash. Well, I mean smaller ships. Lots and lots and lots of smaller ships. So let's get to work on that and let's make it a just a fun ship to use because that is my primary metric. Is this a fun ship to use? I want to have something that has a really good top speed. I'm thinking the large cruiser. Uh, this is more of a reversed or sorry, a refurbished dreadnought era battle cruiser. Um, it's not necessarily a bad ship. It's got 106 hull form. This one, however, has 130. And I'm thinking either the experimental cruiser um, or the modern battle cruiser one is going to be the best option for this particular job. 
I don't want to make these things enormous because the longer they are, like a platform as such, the worse their turning circle. And you can bet your ass that the destroyer is going to be packing torpedoes and most likely the live cruisers are too. So as much fun as this ship would probably be, I think the modern battle cruiser, uh, or, well actually no, I don't like that hull. I like the large cruiser a lot better. We're just going to make it a whole lot smaller. Let's see if I can make it work at 39 knots, standard quarters. Um, money's not really an object, seeing as the amount of wealth I have amassed. So we're just going to go with gas turbines. Oh, sorry, turbo electric. It, that, nah, that's a bit much. Diesels are fine. Otherwise, it's going to get crazily expensive. So, seeing as I'm going to run headfirst into danger, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need reinforced bulkheads. I now have the all-or-nothing armor scheme. And I'm going to use anti-flood, because I am expecting to take a torpedo, and I'd like to be ready. So, what's the job? Engage small ships. And be ready for them with fairly sizable guns. And when I say fairly sizable, I mean on a, a battle cruiser I can put 18-inch guns, which are now the Mark III. But in their default form, they fire every three minutes and change. Which certainly it can be reduced. I mean, you can get a single inch or a single 18-inch uh, gun. Rotates three degrees per second. So it's going to take you a full minute to rotate this thing 180 degrees. No thank you. I am, however, curious as to what I can do with the autoloader and the electrohydraulic turrets. You're going to be up to a very slightly better turret rotation speed, but the reload time is still awful. So no, I'm going to go with the 11-inch Mark V. We're going to go with a, um, well, I guess a Scharnhorst-esque design. But with Mark V guns and the newly acquired Generation 2 radar rangefinder, this thing is going to pack a punch. And this thing, ideally, will do that at range. Now, when it comes to sonar, that will be most useful. Um, I'm thinking just TNT and 2 powder. And we're going to go semi-ballistic. With semi-ballistic, I can still pen against battleships, should I feel like it. Uh, I can most certainly pen a cruiser. And when it comes to dealing with, uh, let's say, cruisers that aren't packing that much armor, I think this will mostly eradicate them. It's still only sacrificing 10% HE fire chance. Of course, if you compare that to this, it's sacrificing a heck of a lot more. But overall, I think this is okay. You can make the case that capped ballistic would be even better. Especially if you put super heavy shells on this thing. And that at 10,000 meter range will give it 7, well, just shy of 7 inches of pen. Which is a most, enough to go through most superstructures. So yeah, lots. Why not? Um, I'm going to have these things be really quite simple in this sense that they're going to have 12 of these guns. This should strike fear into these guys. Now, interestingly, you can only have uh, the 12-inch on a triple version, but you can have a quadruple version of the 14 inches. But for my business, for my job, it's too big. It's too much firepower. I don't need that level of destruction. Uh, most of all, I don't want that level of reload. Because the reload right now is 36.7 seconds, which with an improved crew can be even less. So in order to keep that accuracy high, I'm going to use the Mark V. And I'll not elongate their barrels. And in order to keep the reload low, again, I'll not elongate the barrels. And I'm not going to change the gun to a bigger caliber. As for armor, uh, superstructure armor is going to be important for these ships, considering that we are going to be facing some HE or potentially AP attack. Main belt with 128% armor bonus. Let's put these on group 5, shall we? 148% um, armor bonus is good. Most of the ship, and since this is an all or nothing scheme, it's going to do pretty well. Uh, should be sufficient. Let's go with 4 inch aft, 4 inch 4. Um, what else do I need? More on the conning tower, please. I'll take at least 14 inches. When it comes to the guns, I don't think their sides are very well protected. Let's make that 10 inch. Top armor, 8 inch or 7.7. 7, and this is also going to be 8 inch on the barbettes. When it comes to additional systems, um, let's go to standard ratio for type of shells. This thing can power through the water at 39.5 knots. 
a fairly swift battle cruiser, I'd say, with only a one and a half percent weight offset. But we got more guns. I'm not going to use the um, the bigger variants. I'm going to try to use these plateaus, which will probably force me to use three inch guns. But are you kidding? Is that turret getting in the way? Bloody hell. Okay, fine. Uh, these are the Mark V. And with the Mark V, you can reload in 3.8 seconds. So if something like a DD gets close, or rather if the Akagi gets close to a DD, it's going to be the end of the DD. That's the plan. These things are accurate. They reload very, very quickly. And with the type of shell and propellant that I selected, they can still pack a heck of a punch. So that's the ideal setup. The only challenge that I'm now facing is the ship is slightly overweight. I think reducing the fore and aft armor belt by like a half an inch. Yeah, that's getting me in the, the right direction. Reduce the fore deck a bit. Reduce main deck a bit. And there we go. We're perfectly balanced with 159% engine efficiency. Low pitch, low roll, stable firing platform. This thing is going to wreck some cruisers. Is it going to get built fast? Uh, yes, its build time is only 22 months. So, let's save the Akagi design and get something else. Because what else do you need if you're dealing with a bunch of destroyers? Well, a light cruiser is an ideal platform to hunt them down. I already have the light cruisers of the uh, Yeyamas, that's the speedboats, the 49 nauters. I'm thinking light cruiser, maybe heavy cruiser. Um, I want something with smaller guns that fire very quickly and are just sheerly there to eliminate DDs as quickly as they can. So let's go with a compact tower and a crane tower for the back. I'll have a dual funnel. Let's reduce the or re uh, reorder this like there. <coughs> um, I'm going to give you guys turbo electric drive because I can oil boost engine efficiency, better turning, maintain your speed of uh, 40 knots. What? Look at that gap. 6.8 thousand. 11 and a half. Yeah, right. Um, if we make these boys very sleek, can we get that? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> we can get the weird bug. But the engine efficiency is going to be absolutely horrible. If I go back to 40 knots, it's still not pretty. But at least we're getting somewhere. Standard quarters, please. I'm going to go with group 5. I'm going to go with anti-flood. Reinforced bulkheads, double. They cannot get a torpedo blister, so this is about as good as it's going to get for them. High-end radar, uh, coincidence range finding, because we're firing close range. RDF, depth charges for eight submarines, no thank you. Time to add some guns. Guns, guns, guns. I got Mark V, four-inch guns. Now, normally, I wouldn't consider putting a four-inch gun as a main armament on a light cruiser, but this time around, I will. Because with this, I can very quickly reduce a destroyer to nothing but its components. Simply by putting out a massive amount of fire. That's the plan, anyway. Will that work? I don't know, but I'm willing to find out. Oh, that is unfortunate. Can I get a toll barbet? <clears throat> no, afraid not. I mean, this is the tallest barbet. Yeah, you could do it like this, but the forward firing arc is still pretty bad. Okay, um, you are super firing. That's excellent. I'll give you two more. So let's say at basically any angle, I can get at least nine barrels to bear, which fire every 8.7 seconds. I'm going to buff that. Uh, now it is every 6.7 seconds. And that is with the Mark V. Deadly, accurate, great gun. Two powder. Uh, these guys are going to be doing nothing but HE spam. So incendiary shells is fine. I could make these light shells and make their rate of fire even better. But their damage is going to be pretty little cluster. Like they'll do no pen at 7.5 uh, kilometers. 
that could be a problem. Because it means that these ships are going to have to go absolutely toe-to-toe -to -toe with any opponent before they're going to be able to do any kind of damage. I could, however, give them, like, capitalistic shells. No. What if I go super heavies? They'll still do absolutely jack shit with HE. Am I going incendiary? Burn it all? Or not? Yeah, let's... Let's go incendiary. Um, ideally, if this thing somehow happens to encounter a battleship, it's going to do a drive-by. And it's going to pack a couple of torpedoes to the side. These are going to be fast torpedoes. I would like 23 inch, but I don't think that'll work because the torpedo launcher is too big and won't be able to properly rotate anymore. So let's see if I can put some secondaries here. Uh, the secondaries are not going to be that much bigger or smaller than the primaries. What? That's weird. Okay, that fits. Excellent. Let's put a couple of 2 inch triple barrels. Wait, you can put them up there? Oh, you are a piece of work, aren't you? I've never, I think, had a gun on the bridge. Or at least close to it. Is this super firing? Yeah, according to this, it even fires over this turret. So I now also have a 2-inch gun. But, range, 5 clicks. We're going to buff that a bit. Um, this way I can shoot out to seven and a half, and again, these are Mark V's. So, accurate, deadly, and incredibly good rate of fire. Now, let's put some torpedo launchers on the back. Give somebody the good news, if it happens to get too close. Pitch, weight, roll, four weight offset, everything's a problem. According to the game. Which is fine, and yes, it is a problem. Okay, that looks like a bit of a weird fit, but hey, the game is going to allow it. 10.9 inch front weight offsets, a bit high. Not a big fan of this tower. 2.7, no, base accuracy, 8.5, base accuracy, 11. Go away, you're way too big for what I'm getting for you. There we go. It's a lot more efficient, and I wouldn't be surprised if I could house even more 2 inch guns in there. Okay, I'm surprised I cannot house any 2-inch guns on there. Okay. Oh, I guess we're going to be transporting a couple of these boats off the side of the ship. Old school. Uh, put this back. Put... That's a bit much. I'm going to have these guns here so that they can fire over the torpedo... No? Launchers? Hmm... Okay, fine, we're gonna sit your torpedo launchers amidships. This is four 23 inch torpedoes. Get hit by these? Well, at least you're gonna wake up with a headache in the morning and potentially a bit more. Potentially a bit more. The Kiso class is built in 13 months. That's a fast, fast design. I don't feel like this is the most optimized version of the ship I can get, though. So if I can put another barbette there, and a gun there, and a gun here... Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Um, if I go broadside, I got 12 guns here, I got another 9 guns there, so that's 21 in... or 21 4-inch barrels that fire every 7 seconds. With a good crew, I think we can push that down to 6 seconds. And considering the type of HE, I wouldn't be surprised we can burn down a battleship in minutes. So the rest of this is going to go right into armor. Although the ship is not allowed to have more than 6 inches, sadly. Now, superstructure armor of 6 inches is a bit much, but main belt, fore belt, aft belt, uh, inner belt, other inner belt, another inner belt, inner deck, inner deck. I don't think they'll hit me when I'm doing 40 knots, but with the AI, you'd never quite know. And I'd rather be safe than dead. 
Um, I could upgrade these to have a slightly bigger caliber. I think it's at, yeah, here we go, 4.3. I can start putting armor on these things so they don't get hit and they just jump overboard the moment they take some damage. I don't think I can armor up a 3-inch gun. Which is pretty bad news because it means I'm very likely to start losing a couple of these guns. Which will cost me casualties. One there, one there. So with these, I'm also adding another six barrels per side. Let's give these a longer reach. No. So there's 17%. So I can hit out to 8.3 with these. You don't like where you sit. That's fine. You can hit out to 8.9. And you can hit out to 7.4. So this is, I think, pretty... It's a, a sort of sea whiz boat. If you will. It's a sea whiz boat. Just putting a heck of a lot of shells in the water and hoping something actually connects with the target. Will that work? I don't know. Will it be expensive? Yes. <laughs> Very. Uh, I'm going to give them a bit of leeway when it comes to their eventual displacement. Because I am working on additional rangefinders. Which is Raider Rangefinder 3. So that's progress. I don't like their... 4.2 inch offset, but I... No, sorry, 4.3%. I don't think I can do a whole lot more for them, though. Maybe displace this slightly back. There. It's a bit more spread out. Should get it done. Okay, so that's the Kiso class. It's two new ship designs. Why two? Well, I wanted to, and um, also I haven't actually done any ship design for a long time. So, why not? Seeing as I'm not at war, my budget is not limitless, but I still have really deep pockets. So, let's see. Yeah, I can afford to build a bunch of ships, uh, shipyard capacity-wise. So, I'll take uh, five of the battlecruisers for now. And that's going to put me where? At like 150,000 tons? Something in that reach. So it should still be entirely possible to get a whole bunch of the Kiso uh, Seawiz boats out there. And I'm also going to have to refit my entire fleet with the all or nothing armor scheme. And on top of that, with the additional um, radar rangefinder. The radar rangefinder 2. Let's go with 10 lights. I am working on radar rangefinder 3, but that will take a moment. When it comes to big guns, I'm getting the Mark III 18 inch. I'm up to the Mark II 20 inch. Uh, I'll probably build a huge battleship at some point, but I first want to get a couple of bigger guys out there. Uh, or rather, more numerous guys. We're getting new destroyers up to 3,500 tons. But at this point, I think it's a bit of a diminishing return simply because the whole platform of a destroyer is going to be less and less and less survivable. Is anybody still actually fighting at this point? Uh, no. Everybody is more or less at peace. Uh, it's not far off, though. Russia and Germany are once again at each other's throats. And, yeah, Spanish and Germans don't like each other that much either. But there's not actual war. The US and Britain are very close. Which I would actually welcome. Because if the British can soften up the Americans for me, then I will do the rest. As I'm going through the refits of my ships, I'm coming up to an interesting problem with the Divine Broadside. You see, the Divine Broadside has the 13-inch Mark V nowadays. Now, these are really quite flat turrets, as opposed to the 14-inch uh, gun, which is still the Mark IV... III. The Mark III. Um, these things actually do want to sit, and they don't mind the weird layout of the ship. They will work. These things will not, because they've got their own built-in rangefinder. These things do too, but this is more of an, an elongated design. So, I'm in a bit of a problem right now when it comes to the Divine Broadside. Um, I want to keep her kind of as is, 
but the turrets won't let me. As you can see, the firing arc for these guns is pretty awful. Only some of these will actually still fit. Now, this is pretty bad news. Um, I think there's not a whole lot that can be done about this, because time marches on. And as it does, you're just going to have to work with what you get. Which in this case means I'm going to have to adjust the Divine Broadside in such a sense that she's going to have fewer guns. But they're going to be more accurate, they will reload faster. And um, with the new Radar Rangefinder, I am... With any Radar Rangefinder, <laughs> I am expecting them to be more deadly. Is this the most modern version of the Divine that I have? Hardly. Surely I put a Raider Rangefinder on this boat. Surely. As it turns out, it probably isn't. Uh, this is the 1933 version of the Divine Broadside. I haven't overhauled the ship in six years. No, four years. Um, now, four years might not sound like a lot of time, but it is in this game. In a four years' time, you can get a lot of research done. You can get a lot of progress made, and you can definitely find that your old design, as it is, uh, does not work anymore. Yeah, the ship has radar range finder 1. Here we go. This is the problem. I could replace most of these with secondary guns. I.e. Mark... Mark 4 8 inch guns? Oh, these are small guns. I've been prioritizing big guns. Right. Uh, the firing angle for these actually aren't that bad. But the game doesn't seem to agree with me here. Let's see. Let's give them a Raider Rangefinder 2 first. The problem is, this is going to make the tower um, a bit heavier. You're going to go from 15 to 20%. And this tower is a chunky thing. There's also, I think, well, hmm, I could overhaul the whole design of the ship. This is going to give me long range accuracy. This is going to give me even more long range accuracy. 64 with a higher base accuracy, greater comms range. Okay, sold. Um, this is modern ter- wow, I've researched new towers. I guess the game hasn't said so. So this is also going to be a bit of an overhaul of the Divine Broadside class. I don't think that's going to particularly solve my issues, though. Because the ship is still going to be a little challenged when it comes to her original armaments. I don't think she'll be able to get all of those guns back. Look at that. These things are not going to be able to do as much as they did. I don't know what the original reload was, because the game won't show me. But right now we're looking at 43 seconds. But she used to have four of these turrets, now she has three. Aft weight offset is 19%. Uh, let's go on an all or nothing armor scheme. Group 5 is the best that I have. Natural boilers. No, 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 no. Uh, this is going to go... A couple of ways up. Auto loading one is the most advanced. Electro hydraulic turrets, coincidence is fine. Sto sonar three. RDF is fine. What are we going to do with the ship? These guns haven't really been improved. Um, they're Mark 316s. And I want to keep those. I got the Mark 315s. I got the Mark 314s. The game is doing a weird thing when it comes to development. I could splurge and go 20 inch barrel. Is that going to be efficient? Heck no, because this takes three minutes to reload. These things take 77 seconds to reload, so no. Absolutely not. I could shift this turret around a bit, putting the weight farther forward. I could put the Pagoda Tower forward, which is only going to piss off some of the other turrets. I essentially need more weight on the bow. But seeing as these things now take up a lot of room, I kind of can't. Simply because they take up a lot more room when trying to rotate. 
Now, I could put some more guns on this tower, but I'm afraid that that's going to be towards the stern, not the bow. Also, I'm going to have probably a lot more armor on these things. Um, which could be a really good thing. Because when I put more armor on this ship, it means that more of the shells are just going to get ignored. And as they get ignored, the ship doesn't have to spend as long in repair. Oh, those are two inches. Okay. Hey, it's a pagoda tower. It has to come with its own guns. It's uh, mandatory. <clears throat> We're going to make these long barrels as long as we can. Same for these. No. Surely you can do better. Uh, these 13 inches, I don't want to overhaul. They already have a range of 27 kilometers. And these have a range of 20 kilometers? <laughs> okay, so this is what happens when you get a 13-inch gun that has a substantially better tech level than your 16-inch gun. The 16-inch gun is vastly outperformed by the 13-inch gun. At least when it comes to range. Now, let's be honest, I'm not likely to stay at 27-kilometer range. I won't hit much at 27-kilometer range. So, 20 kilometer range is fine, but I do want an upgrade for those guns. And I don't want to get this thing to be refitting for a couple years. Um, so, let's make sure that she doesn't take that long. This... Uh, yeah, no, let's just put that over there. Uh, this is going to be difficult to balance, though. We're going to have to shift the whole superstructure of the ship, and even then... Yeah, now we're getting somewhere, but... Oh, hold on. Put this here. Put this back. I'm gonna break up the primary and the secondary tower. So that, ideally, here, there's a bit of room to rotate this turret. Yeah, right. It's not that bad. It's also pulling the ship further in, but the problem with this is the funnel. The funnel dictates where the engineering section of the ship comes, basically the engine. And the farther I place that back, the farther this box over here slaps back. And with that, it won't fit anymore. So I could put this all the way over there, and then the turret won't fit anymore. First battleship problems. First battleship problems. How do you fit all this? Well, you put more barbettes on the ship. See, if I put a couple more 16 inches on barbettes, I'm basically growing more room here. That again reinforces the problem. But if I do the same thing on the bow, that should fix the problem. It's too far forward? Huh? Do you have a slanted deck? No, you don't. What's the problem then? Okay, I'm going to remove this. Give me another... There we go. <clears throat> Barbette. For some reason, the game seems to think I can put it over there, but in essence, I can't. Like, make up your mind. Either the thing will sit there or it won't, but not this half-assed shit. Do we need to bring a different Barbette? No. 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 This makes no sense. Then again, that basically describes Dreadnoughts all too well. Come on. Because now, the whole setup won't work. <clears throat> and I'm still aft heavy. Alright, let me work on this. Alright, meet the new layout of the Divine Broadside. She's sacrificed a couple of her 16-inch guns. She's only going to have 12. 
She's going to have the A, B, and then the X, Y turrets. But I'm able to get all of my broadside back, which is what gives the ship its, I, you know, its unique character and as well as her name. So with this layout, I can still retain 12 uh, side-mounted 13-inch guns. This ship is not strictly a capital hunter. Um, it can do that job, as we have seen. With all these guns, it can also hunt trash. I.e. it can also hunt light cruisers, which the Americans tend to have a lot of. So what I'm going to do is uh, give them soft-capped HE shells, which should mean that if something happens to be about 10 kilometers out, a light cruiser, uh, it's going to get whacked by this shell. It's most likely going to die fairly swiftly. Because then I can pen 9 inches of armor, which sure enough most cruisers will have more of. But um, I can hit you every 43 seconds with 3 shells, and I have 12 of these barrels per side. So that should be sufficient. Now I'm not entirely happy about how the, the midsection of the ship turned out. I just took off the super funnel and put that amidships in order to uh, balance this thing out. It is far from an ideal solution. I am getting a good engine efficiency if I put two on. The balance then again gets thrown out of whack. Uh, you can still offset that a little bit by shifting turrets forward, but that also blossoms the size of my entire all or nothing armor scheme. So it's, uh, you know, it's a little difficult to balance the ship. Anyway, um, the ship does still need further armor. I'm going to give her an internal armor belt of 6 inches. I'm going to give her a secondary armor belt of uh, 4 inches and then 2. So this is going to go to 16. And I think that ought to be sufficient. Superstructure of 6 inches is going to make this thing not impervious to fire, but at least I'll have a heck of a challenge to go through that armor. So this is the new Divine Broadside 1937 variant. It's only going to take two months to refit, despite well, basically ripping out all the major components of the ship. Superstructure, funnels, engineering section, turrets, uh, and replacing that with new gear. Nevertheless, if my shipyard workers can do it, I am all for it. Now, all of these renovations and refits are going to take...